Hi everyone, in this video, I'll be talking specifically about how you can successfully nurture entrepreneurship, innovation and independence in children. Now, being somebody who is very highly interested in the education and also personal development industry, I'll be using the example of Israel. And why I picked out this uh, example is because I recently came across a book written by Inbal Ariely, who talks about how does Israel get successful in nurturing independence, innovation and entrepreneurial mindset in their young people. Now, this book is also peppered with examples, real-life examples about how um, this culture has actually successfully used their education system, used uh, certain cultural practices, and how they have uh, actually helped their young people become more innovative and entrepreneurial. Now, one of the examples that they actually do is that Israeli preschools often feature a junkyard that is filled with various objects like furniture, tools, appliances, for children to actually play with. Now, you may think that, oh, you know, this is so unusual. Like, um, usually preschools and play schools are filled with things like, for example, like a sandpit, multiple toys. But the reason um, the author actually said that how this preschool, that have these junk yards, help nurture the children in terms of innovation is that whenever you have things that are lying about, you are sort of forced to think about how can you incorporate them into your play. Now, as a child, perhaps you also have to experiment with uh, experiment and collaborate with other children and, and talk about your creative ideas of how you plan to use these appliances and how you plan to, uh, you know, from these appliances, you create another toy. Or these appliances could be a, a part of another toy. A child is also uh, trying to create and both of you work out together and use this. And also, um, a very unconventional play environment also encourages a lot of creativity. And this is particularly because when you don't have, let's say, like a prefix toy or like a certain environment created for you, you have to like really think, how am I going to use the, the resources out here to the best of my ability so that I create something fun for myself and my friends? So this is one of the ways of how the Israeli culture actually nurtures um, creativity and independence and also innovation. Another, another wonderful example of how innovation and independence is encouraged in the culture is that uh, children... Israeli children are encouraged to take charge of lighting the bonfires during a Jewish holiday. So these kids actually, they start preparing weeks in advance, they gather the firewood, they organize a campsite where they're going to have the bonfire, but particularly perhaps near a beach, and they organize food. And you know what's the best part of it all? Is that there's very minimal involvement from adults. And basically, in this task of creating a bonfire, now you may be thinking, fire and children do not mix, right? Interestingly enough, this bonfire project is basically how children and the youth basically sort of collaborate together um, and they are supposed to find ways of how they obtain the firewood. And usually how they will do it is they will obtain from different sources, for example, like nearby forests, construction sites, and even garbage collection areas. And how these kids actually transport the collected firewood to the campsite is that they use supermarket carts because there's no other alternative. They, I mean, they're not driving cars anytime soon, right? And not only that is um, this bonfire building experiment is truly fascinating because this allows, this allows them to start planning and actually what they'll start to do is they'll start to plan in how they're going to collect those woods. They'll plan uh, how to stake out certain areas where they want to build their bonfire. And in the end also, on the day itself, when they're supposed to have the bonfire, you know, adults and children will be mingling around the camp a bonfire and they're enjoying food and also they're socializing. And if you think about it, according to the book, like Israeli children actually take a charge of lighting the bonfires themselves with very minimal super adult supervision. But what I think is very interesting is that maybe the older kids will actually encourage the younger kids and sort of keep watch over how the process happens. And it also becomes some, some sort of a, like tradition where the older kids will sort of take charge. Maybe they will like take leadership, mini, mini leadership roles. They'll instruct like how the bonfire should be built. They'll probably share like uh, how ways they should keep themselves safe. And honestly, parents are also present at this point in time. But generally, the children are pretty much responsible for tasks such as lighting the fire, managing the wood, and ensuring the safety throughout the entire night where this bonfire is being built. This is very interesting in terms of how much of responsibility is given early on to Israeli children. And, you know, despite the potential criticism sometimes when other peoples around other culture, they go like, oh my god, like, how do you allow kids to run fire so early on? However, I think that it's really incredible because 
Certain cultures around the world, I believe, have practices that allow children to handle responsibility, like fire management. And this teaches them about independence, task management. This teaches them um, how do we, you know, as a group, talk, manage and every keep everybody safe whenever we're doing something big as uh, creating a bonfire. So I do think that this practice perhaps is also, I believe it's about giving tasks to, to children, for example, or taking out certain things and trusting them in the sense that there's a certain kind of framework of how this activity has been done over and over again in their culture. And also perhaps you know, adults sort of empowering children to take on, say, leadership roles, to, t to help them when they need, perhaps. And to also notice that um, when you start to allow children to have no responsibilities with guidance and with advice, this actually prepares them for the world ahead and also prepares them to also think about a lot of logistical things rather than rely on an adult to, say, guide them. Now, another part of um, how Israeli inculcates independence in young people is quite interesting through outdoor play and outdoor kindergartens. Now, outdoor kindergartens were sort of inspired by the Scandinavian models where uh, children are spending a lot of unstructured time in nature, uh, building their resilience, you know, adapting to weather conditions, exploring their surroundings freely. And I think it's a great idea to perhaps also look at how other cultures around the world, how other education systems, what are they doing best that enables for certain values to be inculcated through their young people. So I, I, I do believe perhaps outdoor play is, is one way of um, you know, encouraging children to sort of be aware of their surroundings, uh, exposing them to nature and how beautiful nature is, and for them even to be aware of certain things like weather conditions and how to explore their surroundings safely and freely. Now, for a culture to be successful in innovation and entrepreneurship, it also means that the culture must be able to inculcate a very interesting perspective towards failure. Now, so one example was shared in his book was in 1993. Basically, the author said that there was only one television channel in Israel and it was watched. And in 1978, an Israeli television show called Zehu Zeh, translation, that's it, was the first broadcast and immediately made a hit. One of the show's most famous character was Yad Zek. Sporting a bucket hat, Israeli flag, accordion and gun single moustache, Yazik travels around Israel. At the end of every episode, Yazik falls from a tree, into a river, from the back of a horse and into a cow patty. Immediately afterwards, he gets up and says, Don't worry kids, Yazik always falls and gets back up. A whole generation of Israeli children grew up with very strong message of, Don't worry when you fall, you can always get back up. If you think about it, having a strong cultural references in education and entertainment is such a huge way of us to reinforce a message in society. And no surprises that with this kind of strong cultural references and messaging that always tells you, don't worry, when you fall, you can get, always get back up, it does imprint in the minds of children, especially that you know failure is something of a learning opportunity. Failure, failure is a learning opportunity that's important for entrepreneurial mindset. And also, it is something inevitable that you're always going to, if you try hard enough, you're going to succeed, you're going to fail, but failure is something to be seen as something to be overcome, and basically it's about how you foster resilience in a person. Now, another part of what I find interesting in this book itself, uh, now another feature of the Israeli culture that I find fascinating is that there is an Israeli scout movement. Now this scout movement is basically youth movement meetings where parents send their children and also this uh, principle of the anti-scout movement is that they have minimal adult intervention and it allows a lot of youth, uh, youth uh, to actually be responsible for organizing education and recreation activities within the group itself and how much that this is such a huge expectation for the youth to start taking leadership roles. And I find interestingly enough um, this, the way the structure of this scout movement is that there's a lot of responsibility given for the youth to uh, say responsibility for them to educate and get the younger children and be part of the organization of activities and things like discussion, brainstorming section, budget activities and volunteering. This is where you know like you have the youth actively taking part of organizing some things that they find enjoyable and how they get uh, younger children to be part of those activities. And I think it's such an open-ended environment where um, a lot of participants can actually contribute equally to the organization, the scout movement, and their voices are valued. And for me personally, because I studied in Malaysia and also went through public school, 
leadership skills were mostly built on positions that you take within the school. For example, let's say you were a prefect, a librarian, or perhaps you were involved in extracurricular activities where you are part of the board, and then perhaps then you get to uh, take part in those in those activities or clubs and be part of the discussion. While I do think that those um, extra the way extracurricular activities are run in perhaps in Malaysia is quite interesting. When I look at how cultures around the world, they, for example, Israeli culture, how they immediately get their youth involved in a, a, for a youth a scout a group, for example, where you know, you're empowering all, all members of the scout to actually take a very active role in leadership, I find it interesting because we're not waiting for people to give us a title then become a leader. Perhaps in the case of the Israeli scout, what I look at it is that everybody can be part of this group, everybody can have a say, everybody can be part of something. And adults are, when there's minimal adult intervention itself, that's when you really see like how pe young, young people step up to the plate and they are organizing things, they are making sure there are adequate resources happening, they are getting the younger children involved and it's truly, it's very inspirational, I would say. Now I come to the end of this video and it's been a very interesting activity looking at the many activities and ways of how the Israeli culture truly fosters independence, risk-taking, entrepreneurship and leadership in their youth. Now some of these examples perhaps you might find it interesting in the context of in or you know looking at the best practices from different cultures around the world in terms of how they actually enforce those certain values that they value truly like for example independence, risk-taking, innovation, leadership, and also entrepreneur mindset. So if you have any other suggestions or you come across any books about different how different cultures around the world are successful in implementing certain values in their youth, uh, do feel, feel free to share those book titles in below this video.